Hello, in this video, let's solve a profit maximizing problem for a monopoly, and then they're also facing what's called an excise tax. Okay, so here's what we need to do we've got a monopolist, which is just a term we use for a monopoly company, uh, inverse demand curve, which means that uh, demand is set towards price, and then we've got 12 minus 2q and then the constant marginal cost. So marginal cost is already calculated for us. So what does it mean for profit maximizing quantity? Okay, so that's the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So we already know marginal cost. So we know that that's four. And so then we need to calculate marginal revenue and set that equal to four and then solve for the quantity. Um, and then we'll do something else with the price. Then we're given a tax, and then we'll figure out what's going on with the tax. Okay, so to get the marginal revenue, okay, what we need to do is find the partial derivative of the total revenue uh, function. So what is total revenue? Total revenue is price times quantity. And in this case, we know what price is. Okay, so if we're given price is 12 minus 2q. Okay, so we need to multiply uh, quantity all the way through this equation, and that gives us total revenue. So total revenue, I mean, I guess technically it's q times 12 minus 2q, which equals 12q minus 2q squared. Okay. So then the partial derivative with respect to q, okay, is going to just be 12 minus 4q, okay. So now I want to set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, okay, so that's going to be 12 minus 4q equals 4, okay, and so I'll do some rearranging here, and I'm going to get uh, 8 equals 4q, and then q uh, is 2. Okay, so that's the profit maximizing quantity in this case, and now I want to get the price. Okay, and so now I'm going to take this quantity and this is a monopoly, so the monopoly doesn't face any competition, so they can pick a price that's along the demand curve. Okay, so we're going to plug that quantity back into demand, and that's going to give us the price. Okay, so quantity here ends up being 2. Plug in 2 to get the price, so it's 12 minus 2 times 2, so that turns into 4, and then the price equals 8. Okay, so price is eight. Okay. Now, monopolists cost increases by two dollars due to a tax imposed on the firm's output. Okay, so this is called an excise tax. It's collected by the firm, but then ultimately paid for by uh, the consumer. Okay, so all we're going to do instead of marginal cost is uh, four, we're going to add that two dollar tax. So now effectively the marginal cost is six. So do the same thing, so we're going to set marginal revenue Q, uh, this time equals to 6, okay, so we've got 6 equals 4Q, and then Q equals 1.5 this time. So we've cut, decreased the quantity, that makes economic sense, and then we're going to plug this into our demand curve there to get the price, so price equals 12 minus two, oops, it's not Q because we know Q. Okay, so uh, that's three and so price is nine. So now the price is nine. Okay, how much of the $2 tax is borne by consumers? Well, the answer is all of it. So there's a couple ways to think about this. One is that uh, whichever side has a more elastic curve is gonna borne less of the of the tax, right? And so what's happening here is, is since marginal cost is either four or six, it's constant, it's a perfectly elastic, it's not really a supply curve, but perfectly elastic marginal cost, whether that's six or whether that's four, 
it's not going to change. Okay, but what's happening to the consumer? Let's do some red. Okay, so the consumer. Oops. A little bit more. So the consumer uh, is facing this this situation. There's their marginal revenue. Okay, so the firm is picking a. Let me actually zoom in on this little graph a little bit. Okay, so now going from four to six. Okay, so six will be like up here. This is MC plus tax. Okay, and so the amount of the loss. Okay, so now we're here. The amount of the loss is right here. And that loss, so it's this black triangle I'm shading here. This is the loss from tax and none of that has to do with with the seller. It, it's all from the demand. So that means that the consumer is going to pay in the entire burden of the tax. So if, uh, if we're making policy this and the policy's directive is to uh, tax the consumer, this policy ultimately fails. Thank you.